Uh, welcome to LabVIEW Advantage. Uh, today, like, uh, we'll be learning on like uh, how to create a calculator in LabVIEW. Uh, so this is for the basics uh, for the beginners. Uh, first of all, like, I will use a cluster and uh, create a cluster of all the keypads, uh, starting from uh, numbers zero to nine, and we'll have four different functions. Uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we'll also have the functionality uh, to clear also. So at the moment, like uh, uh, you can see, we are building the string indicator, uh, which is going to display the result. Once we have completed our uh, user interface, uh, we need to assign different values for them. Uh, you simply like a right click on the cluster and reorder the values. Like uh, you just want to keep them into the particular order so that like uh, we can actually program on the block diagram uh, which button has been pressed. So you can just like uh, configure them in particular order. Now we'll work on the block diagram, like we'll start with the while loop and we'll add the event structure because uh, we'll be checking which button has been pressed. So here we have a result for uh, showing the result of the outcome of our mathematical operation uh, through the calculator. Uh, we are also going to initialize the result. Uh, we'll do that by creating the uh, local variable.
Uh, next, we'll be creating three separate shift registers. Uh, since this is a beginner uh, video, that's why like I'm using three different shift registers. Uh, you can also use a single cluster also. So here, like uh, we are uh, creating three uh, shift register uh, because like uh, the lowest one is going to store the uh, second value called let's say B. The middle one is going to cover the B and uh, we are going to perform the mathematical operation between the two and the top one is going to store the operation that we are going to conduct between A and B. So we'll call it as a function. Uh, next, we are going to create the uh, user event, uh, which is going to uh, keep track of like uh, whether the user has interacted with the keypad. If you want to learn more about the event structures, uh, you can take out the uh, beginner scores from Graphdex. So currently we have a 30% discount. So you can go through graphdex.com slash courses. So you can have access. So what we are actually doing here is like we are check, uh, writing a code to check, uh, you know, how to uh, know that like which button has been pressed because uh, uh, currently like we have a cluster of buttons. We are converting that to a, a Boolean array. And by searching uh, 1D array in the cluster, uh, in the array, like uh, we can know that like which button has been pressed. Here like we'll be checking for the true constant. And this actually gives us the index of the button that has been pressed. And now, like, uh, we'll be programming the case structure, uh, you know, like, uh, which button has been pressed. Now we are like we concatenate uh, the values like that has been pressed and uh, will be displaying the result. Uh, currently, like uh, initially when you begin with, uh, it is only going to store the first variable that we need to perform the operation. Uh, we just connect the uh, shift registers wires uh, directly because uh, we don't want to change the values in those shift registers. Once we have completed with the uh, shift registers values and everything for the button values from zero to nine, uh, we assign uh, different other uh, button values to the mathematical operations and clear. So here like uh, we configure the add. So whenever we press the add button, whatever the value is in the first shift register, we are restoring that into the A variable, which is the middle one shift register. And we also change the value in the function. So in this case was the add and uh, we'll go into the other cases and repeat the same process by assigning each of the values to subtract, uh, multiplication, and division.
once you have uh, created the uh, functions for like each of the other buttons and everything now we need to work on the result so at the moment like uh, we have uh, three different values in uh, three different C registers the top one contains the function value uh, the second and third C registers are going to store the uh, values for A and B variables uh, respectively so here like uh, what we're actually doing is like uh, whenever we press uh, the result button or the equal uh, symbol on the keypad uh, the values on A and B is going to be operated uh, based on the value uh, that is stored in the function. Uh, to perform these mathematical calculations, uh, we need to convert the string back to the uh, numbers and vice versa uh, when we need to display the value in the result. So first of all, like, we'll be converting the numbers, uh, the strings into the decimal. And after that, uh, we need to convert that uh, once the operation is completed. So for the division, uh, we need to convert them into the fractional number rather than the decimal. So now like uh, our entire functionality is completed, uh, now the only thing we need to add is uh, basically uh, the, for the default case and finally like uh, we need to write a code uh, to stop the, uh, you know, the application. To stop the VI, like uh, we just need to add a new event for the stop button. So now like uh, it is a uh, time to test our code. So we'll just like, uh, you know, run the VI and we can see the value zero. We'll just try to add one plus two. And as you can see, like uh, there's a zero is actually coming in the beginning. Uh, that has actually happened because uh, we have added a zero whenever we're pressing the functions like add function or something. As you can see, there's a zero is being, uh, you know, added on the right hand side. So we just need to replace that with the empty string. So since this is a beginner's exercise, like it will not go uh, far more deeper and everything, but uh, there are many different ways which you can actually use to customize the way how your code is going to work. So if you want to learn further, like uh, you can uh, reach out to us, like uh, you can just like uh, email to uh, us uh, at ram.gurung at the red graphics.com or uh, you can visit uh, graphitex.com slash courses to enroll to our lab courses. We have got like a very exciting courses which is going to help you become a very better lab view developer. As you can see, like we just uh, added the empty strings and as you can see, like whenever we perform the operation, like it works like a charm. So uh, if you need it, like you can make uh, several changes. You can also customize the user interface and so on so that like it actually looks very, very professional.
and so yeah so this is the end of uh, one of our first uh, videos so like uh, we'll, every week like uh, we'll be bringing you different kind of algorithms and different kind of uh, exercises that is going to make you make your lab view better so if you have any projects that you need to have help with uh, you can reach out to me okay like i'll be writing the details in the description so yeah happy holidays and see you guys in 2025